Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Thursday, August 3rd, 2017 edition of VR News. One of the negatives, guys, uh, of not having a regular job, me being off these few months, it is so easy to lose track of time. <laughs> Literally, I have to think about what day it is. When you work, you know, because your whole life is geared around Monday suck, woohoo, it's Friday, right? And yeah, you might love your job and you don't pay as much attention, but you still probably, most days, know what day it is. I literally have to think about it. And I'm going to re-enter the workforce, do some IT consulting in about a month or two. I may do this once or twice more. I'm going to try not to, but I'm pretty sure it's Thursday today. The other thing I just wanted to quickly clarify, there's two aspects to what I talked about yesterday. And I used the term baby steps when talking about the headline story about being fooled by an artificial human construct. What I didn't mention was put that into context. Absolutely. If we're talking about where we've come from, these aren't baby steps. These are giant leaps, right? Compare it to 8-bit graphics, Atari 2600, etc. But in terms of where we got to get to, an artificial construct that can pass the Turing test, that's a whole other discussion. I see that as being really far away. But I also see just having something that you are able to focus on on screen fool you for a sustained period of time i'm not buying that anybody's going to get fooled and if if you were fooled i would have to chalk it up to being extremely distracted not being able to singularly focus on the target not that you weren't able to tell it wasn't a real human but it was freaking cool Absolutely. All right, guys, let's jump into the first story. The Void, the company behind the multiplayer Ghostbusters VR experience, which I thoroughly enjoyed in New York at Madame Tussauds. They are using their VR expertise to develop a new, what they're calling, quote unquote, hyper reality experience, currently named Star Wars Secrets of the Empire. It's going to debut this upcoming winter holiday season, downtown Disney at Disneyland, and Disney Springs at Disney World. Their official statement reading, At the Void, we combine the magic of illusions, advanced technology, and virtual reality to create fully immersive social experiences that take guests to new worlds. A truly transformative experience is so much more than what you see with your eyes. It's what you hear, feel, touch, and even smell. Through the power of the void, guests who step into Star Wars Secrets of the Empire won't just see this world, they'll know that they are part of this amazing story. So again, this holiday season. We also hear, this is an Upload VR story, from one of the co-founders for Oculus Story Studio, Maxwell Planck, feeling that the studio still had more to do for VR storytelling. And... Talking about the closure, he said it was too bad and felt like we had more to explore. So they were around for two years. In that time, they released three projects. Oculus originally stated that the closure meant that Quill, for example, would no longer have any updates. Despite the closure, it just got a fresh set of new features. So perhaps mostly probably going to be bug fix updates, but the odd feature still thrown in. This story absolutely blew me away. I am a sucker for seeing virtual reality do amazing things, and this story, absolutely one of those. So James Blaha, he founded a company called Vivid Vision, and it was formerly called Diplopia. This was back in 2013. They have a really cool, interesting approach to treating lazy eye disorders. And that's where you've basically got one eye that is a weak eye and another eye that's the dominant eye. And that can manifest itself in somebody looking cross-eyed at times or, you know, having their vision look not balanced. Well, they raised 2.2 million in venture funding just this past May, and they are offering their innovative treatment in 95 eye clinics. 
They've even got eye specialists referring patients with lazy eye disorders to Vivid Vision. And a lot of that really started to take off after the results of a peer-reviewed study went public. The study included 17 adults, each used Vivid Vision for eight 40-minute sessions over two months. Less than 50% of the subjects had measurable stereoscopic vision prior to treatment. After treatment, over 90% of subjects developed measurable stereoscopic vision and had an average gain of two lines on the acuity chart. At first, at our local ophthalmological meetings, they did not want to believe in the results of dichoptic training study. Nowadays, more and more ophthalmologists sending amblyopic patients to our clinic. That from Juraj, who is from the UVEA MediClinic and Jesenius Faculty of Medicine. And how this works is the coolest part to me because it seems like VR is almost designed for lazy eye disorders. It works by increasing visual stimulation to the weak eye while decreasing stimulation in the dominant eye. And that in VR is easily achieved thanks to the way VR images are rendered stereoscopically. That's the nature of how VR is rendered. Images are shown separate to each eye. So the treatment is in the form of a game, basically a depth perception game. It provides game cues, but it only provides those game cues to the weak eye. And that forces the, br the brain to begin countercompensating. Results of the study include labeling some current treatments that they've been using as penalizing therapies. And that's what's so neat about this story. It's not just about doing cool v VR stuff. It's about getting actual, tangible health benefits because of virtual reality technology. Just really freaking cool. At this week's SIGGRAPH 2017 in Boston, one exhibition in particular getting a lot of attention. The official narrative of the exhibition calls it artificial movement sensation in VR using four-pole galvanic vestibular stimulation. If you're still with me after that and haven't skipped ahead, it's basically a complicated way of saying we can make you feel like you are moving in different ways by zapping parts of your head. That's literally what this thing does. The exhibition takes the form of an experience, they call it the GVS ride. It's the results of years of studies by researchers at Osaka University in Japan. And what they do is essentially put electrodes onto the patient's head, or we won't call them a patient, the uh, let's call them viewer, onto the viewer's head Electrical current is then passed through those electrodes at various points to create the sensation of specific types of movement. For example, electrodes placed in pairs over the temples, inner ear, and forehead to create the sensations of moving laterally, front to back, yaw rotation, and even up and down. Now, the GVS ride that's at SIGGRAPH is based on earlier work. It only induces the feelings of lateral and front to back. No word on how or if this would ever find its way onto a consumer device. They've had some hopeful results kind of as a side effect in treating a lot of VR motion sickness with this, but I'd be very cautious and I would want to see a lot more study done on this before recommending that to anybody that I know that has VR motion sickness. But still, yet another example of how varied the research into VR applications is. Guys, that is it for the Thursday edition of VR News. Game and Friday tomorrow. As always, cheers.